Who is the tenth man? One out of ten persons will suffer from a psychiatric disorder at some time during his life. The tenth man is the man or woman or child in your community who needs or will need emotional guidance. More coffee, Joe? I said more coffee, Joe. No. Well, the least you can do is answer me. Every morning it's the same old thing. You bury your nose in that newspaper. Well, if I had something better to look at, I'd look at it. Meaning me, I suppose. It isn't enough that I have to keep house for you and bring up three kids. I have to look like Hedy Lamar besides. Hmm? Joe, sometimes I get fed up. Sometimes I feel like putting on my hat and coat and walking straight out of here. Hey, what time's it getting to be? Gosh, I gotta run. Where's my hat? Bye, May. See you tonight. Don't be too sure, Joe Bradley. Don't be too sure. Huh? Hey, what's eating you? Why don't you go to a movie or something? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ralph Bellamy. You're listening to Love Without Words. A true story about a woman who thought her marriage was without love. And you've just met May and Joe Bradley, a couple in their 30s. They have a nice home in the suburbs, three kids, a reasonable amount of security, and a whole lot of bad marital habits. You heard May and Joe a minute ago. Unfortunately for them and their three kids, that wasn't just a spat. May and Joe carry on like that all the time. Now, May did more wondering about her unhappy marriage than Joe did. So she made some discreet inquiries and finally was referred to the marriage council. There she met Mrs. Wallace, one of the counselors. I'm afraid I don't know very much about this marriage council. Well, we're a sort of clinic for marriages. You mean you solve people's marriage problems for them? Not directly. But we make suggestions, and you're free to accept or reject them. Oh. We help our clients to understand their own feelings about marriage, to help them come to grips with the things that trouble them, and to help them do something about them. Well, it's hard to put my finger on just what our trouble is. Well, let's just talk about it for a while. I told you about how he reads a newspaper during breakfast. Yes, I can sympathize with you there. You naturally feel he should be more sociable at breakfast and could read his paper on the train. Well, of course, he does drive to work, so he can't do that. Oh, I don't know. Joe's a good provider and all that, I suppose. But if he does something nice, he spoils it all by saying something nasty. Oh, what do you mean? Well, like my last birthday. He gave me this fur coat and asked me if I wanted to go out to dinner. And Joe hates to go out. Oh. Well... I thought he'd say something about how we like to be seen going out with me. You know, something nice. No. Instead, he said he wanted to go out to get a square meal for a change. I see. Uh, then Mr. Bradley isn't very uh, affectionate. Not exactly not affectionate. It's just that, well, he never says he loves me. You know what they say about still waters. Oh, Joe's deep all right. Sometimes I think he's too deep for me. Is Jimmy asleep, Joe? Yeah, he just dropped off. Did you look in on the babies? All quiet on the nursery front. What are you doing? Oh, just sitting here thinking... Want to run downtown for a movie? I'll get Aggie over to sit with the kids. No. You don't like movies, so what's the point? Joe? Huh? Why did you ask me to go to the movies? Was there any particular reason? No, it's something to do, that's all. Oh. No, let's just sit home tonight. Okay. 
He certainly is deep. Say something, May? Huh? Oh, no, no. Hey, did you see these pictures of people skiing in Quebec? Yes, I saw them. Why? Huh, looks real nice. Might be nice for us to take a trip there. A trip to Quebec? Yeah, why not? We could leave the kids with your mother for a few weeks. A few weeks? Oh, Joe, that sounds wonderful. Do you really mean it? Well, why would I say it if I didn't mean it? When can we start? Whenever you can get ready. Gee, am I overcome. Oh, I can hardly believe... What made you think of the trip, Joe? Oh, those pictures, I guess. Oh, it must have been something more. What was it, Joe? Nothing, I tell you. I'd just like to learn something about skiing before I get too old, that's all. Skiing? That's all? Well, you can find somebody else to go skiing with. I'm staying home. May. Now, oh, what's got into her? Gosh, there's no pleasing that woman. <laughs> Mrs. Wallace, I know May's been coming here to the marriage council once a week for five or six weeks, and I thought maybe if I came to see you, you could tell me what's wrong with her. I'm very glad you did drop in. We usually prefer to see both persons concerned, either separately or together, depending on the case. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of time before we met. Well, I don't know all the ins and outs of how you people work this council, but... It certainly would help if you could sort of drop a few hints to May. Hints? About what? Oh, just little things. For instance, like coming to breakfast with her hair in curlers. And, and when I'm trying to read the morning paper, she's always after me gabbing about something. I can't talk and read the paper at the same time. No, I guess you can't. But that's not the main thing. Gosh, I... I don't know how to put it. it it's just that I do my best to please her. I've never forgotten an anniversary, but... Somehow, I'm always doing the wrong thing. I wonder why you are so faithful about remembering anniversaries. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to square myself. But no matter what I do, she's always acting like she's carrying some kind of a grudge against me. Well, there it is. This is a marriage clinic, isn't it? Here's one busted marriage. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, sure. Yes? Oh, but this isn't her regular appointment. I see. Well, just a moment. Mr. Bradley? Yeah? Your wife is outside. Is it all right with you if I ask her to come in and join us? M May, outside? Gosh, I didn't want her to... Oh, well, I, I suppose it's all right. Good. Uh, tell Mrs. Bradley that Mr. Bradley is here and ask her to come in if she wishes to. I've been hoping that you and Mrs. Bradley could come for a joint interview sometime. Looks like this is it. Yes. Come in, Mrs. Bradley. Hello, Mrs. Wallace. Well, Joe, this is a surprise. Hello, May. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Bradley? Thank you. Now, uh, the receptionist told me that you came today because you had something to tell me. Suppose you go right ahead and talk about it. Well, um, I... Go ahead, I... May. Don't mind me. Well, last night, Joe suggested that we take a trip to Quebec. Why, how nice. You didn't tell me about that, Mr. Bradley. Well, I was going to. That's why I came to see you, in fact. Oh. You see, when I first suggested the trip, May seemed to like the idea. Then all of a sudden, she blew her top and said she'd rather stay home. Why did you change your mind, Mrs. Bradley? Uh, I don't know. I... Was it something I said? No. It was what you didn't say. What? I was hoping the trip would be... would be something like a second honeymoon. But no, no, you, you just wanted to go skiing. Oh, gee, May, I, I don't care about skiing. What? You... you don't? No, I just said that because... well, because you pushed me into a corner. You wanted me to say that I wanted to go to Quebec on a second honeymoon, but... Gosh, May, I, I can't say things like that straight out. Something inside just won't let me. But I wanted to, May. You did, Joe? Oh, well, then maybe I'll reconsider. Oh, swell. I'll get the train tickets on the way home. Train? Oh, but it's so slow that way, Joe. Who cares how slow it is? It'll be our second honeymoon, won't it? <clears throat> well, 
Anyway, I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time. This was the beginning of the attempts of May and Joe to work out their marital problems by trying to understand one another better. When they came to the marriage council, they found themselves in a new kind of relationship, one in which they were accepted by Mrs. Wallace as they were without criticism or judgment. Gradually, the same kind of relationship began to grow up between them at home. May stopped criticizing Joe because he didn't fit her ideal as a demonstrative lover and began to accept him as the shy, rather gruff and silent, but deeply affectionate person he really was. Joe, on his part, tried to understand May better, and even began in the end to respond to her more tolerant and sympathetic attitude, with more obvious affection than he had ever been able to show before. But that's not all there is to their story. May Bradley came in to see Mrs. Wallace one day, shortly after her return from Quebec. You know, Mrs. Wallace, there's something I never told you. About our oldest boy, I mean. Yes. I, I guess I should have told you before, but it didn't seem to have anything to do with Joe and me. You see, Jimmy, our oldest boy, has always been a great trouble to us. Oh, in what way? Well, he was always getting into mischief. Never minded us. He even tried to run away several times. We thought of taking him to one of those child guidance places. But now, oh, you'd be amazed. Since Joe and I have been getting along so well, Jimmy's been like a different kid. Gee, I never realized what we were doing to the kids. But everything's all right now, isn't it? Yes, and it's going to stay that way. Unfortunately... There are less than 50 individual marriage councils in the United States and Canada. So most married couples, or couples contemplating marriage, have to work out their own problems. But are they doing a good job of it? Or do they need help? Look around your community and judge for yourself whether or not it needs a marriage council. You have just heard Ralph Bellamy as narrator in Love Without Words, a presentation of the National Mental Health Foundation and other organizations dedicated to the preservation of mental health. <laughs>